had steak and then you know a couple couple of bottles of beer and they started calling up awards and somebody called and said uh, so Team Serena won third place in the Win Point race and I sent my seven year old daughter who up to go gather the flag that we were gonna get right so she I guess she was nine in two thousand seven she's this towhead kid she's really beautiful little girl right walks up about this high and all the guys are you know watching her go by and they're happy and they're clapping and she goes and shakes the hand of the guy and receives the flag and comes back and a few minutes later they they called and they said and then the Stevenson Award third place goes to the house again so she goes back up and she grabs it again and she like gathers the flag and she comes back and they this went back and forth four or five times and I, and I, and I looked around and she was getting all these pride all this all this applause and having a wonderful time, I looked her around the room, she was the only seven-year-old there, or nine-year-old there at the time, and I thought, something is wrong with this picture. Mm -hmm. So I, I grabbed the pen and a napkin, and I counted the number of races that we had started that year as a, as a little family. And I realized that we had actually been on the starting line 55 times between June and, can you imagine, 55 times between June and September, in a Lake Mich on the Lake Michigan series, and we've done really well, except that we were the only ones doing it with a couple of daughters on board, right? So I thought, well, that's 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 the problem. There's the real issue that I want to talk about in this book, and so that's that's why this was written. So now what I'm going to do is share with you some of the data I collected over the years about sailing, and then share some of the perspectives about this style of of uh, growing up that. That's what we'll talk about. Make sense? So um, let's start out with some numbers. So this is um, this is sailing in the United States. And uh, uh, remember, 1948 was the year of those two guys. This is 1949, and here's 2009. So a couple years ago now, the date is a little bit dated. The green bar's population, going from 150 million people in North America to 300 in the United States to 300 million in 60 years which is actually pretty interesting to, to start with. If you, think about, if you think about that line, both birth rate and immigration have stayed almost linear, regardless of economy, for 60 years. Isn't that amazing? And we've doubled in size. So I was in Bermuda, I said, 10 days ago. They, have, they did exactly the same thing, only they started with 30,000 people and now have 60,000 people. So in the, basically in the developed world, this has been about the population rate. It's pr pretty amazing to me. Now. Um, so 300 million, that's the right-hand uh, axis. On the, on the left-hand axis, that represents the number of millions of people who call themselves recreational sailors in, in the United States. And that's the orange bar that you're watching, that you see going up and down. So 1949, about a million and a half of us called ourselves recreational sailors. By the time we got to 1979, we had about 12 million of us that called ourselves recreational sailors. And now we're at about 2.6 million, OK? So about 8 million people less than there were in 1979, which to me doesn't actually feel like that long ago, because that's about the time that's for right on the sewing, right? So that, that's my career, unfortunately, in sailing. Now, when, as a researcher, I look at this and I think to myself, now, there, there are three things, questions I want to ask here. One is, what was going on here while we were growing? What happened at that point? And, and, and what's been happening ever since? Just, just for interest, for, for you know, just, just because it's interesting, it seems to me to be an odd, odd thing. Now let's let's do a couple of other quick notes on this chart. The first is, it, it if we redefine what it means to be a recreational sailor, we could change that orange line. So, for example, if a whole bunch of kids go for for boat rides once, right, and we call them recreational sailors, then that line would be different, significantly different, right? Um, so that's not the way it's defined. The way it's defined is, uh, it's not my definitions. Uh, there's a good book uh, from U of M that talks about uh, hobbies and commitments to outdoor activities. And it basically says, if you think about or commit about 120 hours a year to something, and you identify as a fisherman or a guitar player, then you qualify as a, as a, as, as a member of that, of that community. So 120 hours a year is what we're talking about here. Now, that might seem like a lot of hours, but I'm going to come back to 120 hours in a little while and show you that it really actually isn't a lot of hours. What, one way of thinking about it is that it's not just, it, it doesn't mean I own a boat, right? It can be anybody that sails. 
And it doesn't mean I spent 120 hours on the water. It means here, here we are in a room for an hour together, and you guys only have 119 hours left that you have to put in this year <laughs> to cut, right? Because we're thinking about it right now, if, if that makes sense. Reading about it and planning and prep and all of the stuff that you do, that, that's the 120 hours. Get it? Okay? So that's that definition. So sailing's not the only thing that's down. Let's, let's do a, a couple of other uh, examples of things that, are, that have plummeted recently. Fishing is down 32%, you can imagine. And hunting is down 43%, dragged by other issues, not, not just the same, similar issues that we're talking about here. Backpacking is down 12%. And these numbers are just since 1997. Not since 1979, this is since 1997. Sailing is down 35% since 1997, which is just 15 years, if you think about it. It's, a amazing, it's an amazing rate of decline. So when you look at that list, what I like to do is find patterns and stuff, because I think about research all the time. What, what do you see that's common out there? That's, that plus sailing. Outside. Outside? <coughs> Recreational activity. Recreational activity. Yeah. yeah, what else? What else might what what else do you see in that list? They're all down. Yeah, they're all down. But what 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 are some other common common characteristics of these activities? Activities take preparation and equipment. Good. Yep, they take some gear and they and you got to work on it a little bit. What else? I was thinking travel and transportation. Yep, kind of that's kind of falls in the prep time category too. They're physical. Yep, they're absolutely. Physical. They're difficult. Very good. I like that one a lot. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you're yeah. you're really on something there. Who, who were we doing these things with? Who was I doing those things with in 1979? Yeah. Okay. You with me so far? So so now now that we've done all these things. So I, this book comes out, it's called Saving Sailing, and the first thing that happens in the blogosphere is a bunch of people say, well, you know what, that's easy, it's just too expensive. You know, it's elitist, it's that America's Cup thing, it's just too expensive. So uh, we can jump to a lot of conclusions about why things might be down. We just, we just listed some, not, not necessarily barriers, but things that might be something we need to sort through. What we're going to do for the next maybe 20 minutes or so is just dispel notions about sailing specifically. We're going to take all the things, all the conclusions people jump to and try to put some, 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 some math around it. Um, so let's just, let's just go at this. Let's, if, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you yourself had written a book called Saving Sailing and put it out there, a whole bunch of people would say, well, I can tell you all the reasons why people don't sail. It's not fun, it's not kid friendly, it's too expensive, blah, 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 blah. So, this is, so let's do a why not sail and, and list barriers. But before we do it, I want to tell you a story about this specific boat. This is in Milwaukee on, uh, on a Monday night, uh, which is um, the, the night of what, what's called now the Milwaukee Bay Women's Offshore Series, which is the fastest growing activity on Milwaukee Bay with sails on boats. Uh, about maybe 10 years ago, three women got together, uh, very tired of sailing with their husbands because their husbands were treating them poorly. <laughs> and they can't imagine that happening. And, and they said, we're taking these boats out without them. We're going to go, you know, we're good enough to go sailing on our own. And they had two marks thrown in, and they started sailing windward lured courses in a, race, in a racing series. And uh, 10 years later, there are 24 boats or something like that, and about 250 members of this fleet, each person who's a member, the crew, all, the, all the crew and all the skippers um, uh, essentially go in for 25 bucks at the beginning and race six Mondays and then have a championship at the end. And um, it's actually a, a beautifully orchestrated program. They have dinner after every race. And what they do after dinner is decompress and debrief and talk about the things that went well and gossip and do all that kind of stuff. It's really a, a, a perfect thing. And they meet at three different locations in town, one in the north and one in the south. And they've got it all orchestrated. This is Phyllis McDonald, and she's racing a, somewhat, a borrowed Catalina 30. I'm not even sure whose it is, except I want to point out it's been turboed because it has North Kevlar 3DL mainsail on it. <laughs> uh,